Hello, it's a legend here, <laughs> bringing you the review of Hellraiser 2022. Oh my gosh, this movie was very good. I love, I love this. I love this movie. This is a good movie. It's a really good movie. Great adaptation of the Hellbound Heart, the book. Clive Barker, legendary creator Clive Barker. It's the reboot of the Hellraiser franchise. I like what they did with this. Some choices, I'm like, I would, I would like some choices. But it was really good. It was really good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crap on this movie. I'm not gonna do that because I enjoyed it and my family enjoyed it. Cause you're watching together. So this movie was directed by David Bruckner, who made the, the Night House, who everyone is giving that movie critical acclaim. I haven't seen the Night House yet, so I'm going to check it out at some point. I'm going to check it out. Don't worry. I'm on it. <laughs> but yeah, he directed the movie. Cloud Barker executive produced, um, which I endorse. You got to have the creator of this, the, some, you know what I'm saying, of the book and the original franchise on board, you know what I'm saying? Just help it, you know what I'm saying? Keep those, or keep most of the uh, plot correct, you know what I'm saying? And the way the characters look and how the movie would feel, you know? Obviously, David, David Brockner, I saw like tra uh, trailers in certain parts of the Night House. I haven't seen all the Night House. I'm going to check it out, as I said before. Very dreamlike, very, um, very sleek, you know what I'm saying? The way everything's shot. Had his own very had his own style, and I can tell uh, that's his kind of style, like you saw in the movie Hellraiser twenty twenty two. But um, yeah, let's get into the movie. Jamie Clayton as the Hell Priest, incredible. Just the way she talks, talks like this. Oh, wow, I love it. I love the way she did it because obviously they're doing it closer to the book itself. And the original Hellraiser was, and I love Hellraiser. Hellraiser, Hellraiser, the one is incredible. Uh, and I liked two and three as well, and the rest just fell off. But they had some good concepts in there. Um, but that was when Cloud Buckles had slowly, slowly started to get away from the, the sequels. But Hellraiser one, incredible. Um, but it's um, Jerry Clayton, so good, so good. Respect, much respect to Jamie Clayton. Jamie Clayton, tight. Um, we've got some other characters in here as well. Um, we have, what's her name? Odessa Hizion? I think that's how you pronounce her name. The main character, Riley. She's a really good actor. I like her. I like her. She's a very unique look as well. She's got big lips. Uh, big eyes. Uh, and she got the curly hair. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Um, great. Um, what was it? Great. No, I'm not going to go. No, no I'm not going to say great. Heck, no. Uh, really good lead for this kind of movie, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The flawed hero, you know. Um I would say hero. Flawed main lead, I'd say. Cause she ain't no hero. <laughs> I'm sure she ain't hero. She's not a hero. There are no heroes in this movie. But um yeah, so let me get into the let me get to the story. Let me get to the plot. So it follows this character Riley, who's a drug addict who has a brother called Matt and she lives with him and his roommates and his boyfriend and <laughs> she literally um, comes back after breaking in to this rich guy's crate and um, what do you call it? And, and safe, yeah, that's what you call it. A safe with like a box inside, a puzzle box. And when you see that puzzle box, you know what's, what's gonna go down. So they steal that. She takes it home. The boyfriend, her boyfriend, he, he leaves. You know what I'm saying? He goes back to his yard. She comes back home. It's, well, it's like early morning at that point. Brother's had enough for her. She's like, hey, he's like, hey, let me see if you ain't on drugs or something. You know what I'm saying? And this, and this, uh, this. <laughs> And his sister is literally sleeping with man as well, like bare loud in the house. And his brother has roommates. Bare, mad disrespectful. Mad disrespectful. 
But um, yeah, she's uh, she's that kind of person. So I, I said before, flawed and damn sure ain't no hero. <laughs> but she's a person we follow in this movie, so we got to deal with it. So she comes home, brother tries to check her. She's like going off. She, so she's like a character from Euphoria. She's basically Rue, but uh, not at the highest level that we've probably seen. She's probably done Rue stuff, but we haven't seen it because this is the point where the brother's had enough of her and kicks her out of the house. Because she goes off in him like, she's saying, you got a crappy apartment, blah, blah, blah. She goes, I'm like, oh, they kicked her out as well. I was like, get the freak out of here. Riley, get lost. So he kicks her out. And she takes her stuff. She takes, takes some drugs. She takes the box. She goes at this random playground. Um... She solves the puzzle and a, a spike comes out of it because what I didn't go through, the first part of this movie was like a flashback um, where you have Gorin, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's, what is his name? What is his name? What is his name? Gorin Vizhnich, that's the one guy from ER, Roland Voigt. And she, does they say she? No, he is sacrificing people to the Leviathan. He's trying to get his wish, you know what I'm saying? His audience with Leviathan, his God, he's the one they want, he prays to, you know? Or he's sacrificing people too. And he has a lawyer who sends people to him as well. She's in charge of his estate. It's someone called Serena. Um, yeah. Serena. And she's she stars in uh, Succession. She's really good. I, I love that woman. The, the accent. I love it. Sexy woman. Um, yeah. So that that scene ends. And then it's, it's a six year jump forward. Which is, which brings us to Riley's character. Yeah. Because I didn't say the starting. I should have. Um, that's when you see a glimpse of the Hellraiser effect. Chains coming out, dragging people to another place, but you never see where they go. They kind of lead that to your imagination up to this point. So yeah, so she solves this puzzle. A spike comes right out of the puzzle, which um, exhausts blood, but it misses her hand. Didn't didn't take her. She wasn't meant for uh, well, the Hell Priest. Jamie Clayton's character says, it was meant for you, but if not you, then choose. You know what I'm saying, basically. And um, have a glimpse of the brother sensing where her sister is and that she's in, tri she's in danger. He goes out there, gets his hand pricked by the box. And I'm like, oh my God, okay. He's taking her place. He's about to die. Tries to clean her up. Goes to this bathroom, this public bathroom, and gets taken. Well, here he's ah! taken. Then uh, Riley tries to find him, and that's why we have um, Riley just um, going nuts because um, police come, ambulance, all that kind of stuff goes down. Matt's boyfriend, he's going, he's going crazy. Roommates like, what the heck is he? Riley doesn't know because she's off her head. She's drugged. She's drugged up to the eyeballs at this point to about three. Free pills. Um, so she brings the box to her boyfriend. The boyfriend's like, hey, I want to know part of that. Don't don't give me that box. And in the, in the end of this movie, it makes sense why he doesn't want to touch the box. It all makes sense. So at this point, yeah, he then he, he goes to see Serena, who's in a, a home because she's really ill. Um, she's dying. Smoke, smoking, maybe I don't know. Her lungs have been shot to pieces or some kind of illness, disease that she um, attracted. She knows about it because they didn't quick question her. Where's my brother? Blah, blah, blah. What's what's going on right now? She she takes the box and goes, "Hey, you don't you, you don't know what you're doing. Let me, give me that box. Let me hide this box real quick because I locked it up myself. You guys broke into it and took it. Give me that box, man. Give me that box." Uh, and um, they take the box. Uh, well, she takes the box. Riley tries to take it from her. They're, they're they're struggling over the box. Box pricks Serena. Successions. When succession leads, takes her hand, or spikes her hand, pricks it. And then they, they leave. They leave this woman. And I'm like, oh my days. It's like, wow. 
think he just told me to this bitch, she die. I'm like, what's that, savage? Um, and she gets carried away by these nurses, these um, orderlies or whatever they are. And the Cenobites come. They come. The claim and I'm a victim, Serena. Um, and then, yeah, she, she's dead. Um, and then uh, this whole movie just starts to unravel, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, all this crazy stuff is happening, you know what I'm saying? Because um, the roommates go to find Riley, because Riley goes to, to uh, Roland Voigt's house, a massive house built in the shape of a cube with special designs on it, which is meant for something, but we'll find out later. Uh, she goes in there, she breaks in. Um, then we see silhouettes and cuts of a guy who's still living in the house. So we kind of we kind of know someone's still living in the house. Um, the roommates uh, they track her down. The boyfriend, Matt's boyfriend, tracks her down, uh, and her boyfriend tracks her down. And it's where chaos starts to happen. Um, the roommate. You know what I'm saying she gets she gets pricked. Um, um, because we we find out Roland Voigt is still alive. This guy's been tortured, been tortured, you know. Literally, he's in a living hell because he chose was it sensation? Because in this book that Riley found, there are different gifts that that the Cenobites offered, that Leviathan offered. And you choose one, that's what they give you. He chose sensation. And that literally had this mess, this massive metal contraption inside his body. It keeps him alive just enough for him to feel everything. He would not be able to get any respite from it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, savage. Savage. So. <laughs> that's what he's trying to correct. He wants to do another series of killings to kind of remove this metal contraption from his chest. So he, he hired Riley's boyfriend. Yes, I'm like, oh, snap. Oh, my God. Yeah, there we go. I just found this uh, searcher's name, Trevor. There we go. So that's Riley's boyfriend, Trevor. So he hired Trevor to, to basically collect victims for him. So that, that all makes sense now why he would do, he was very hesitant to touch the box and he just kept his distance from ever touching it. So that, you know what I'm saying? He even covered the box at one point with his clothes. He didn't want to touch it or he didn't want to get any kind of spikes, nothing. So that all makes sense. But he gets bitten by the chatterer. So the chatterer is in this as well, yeah? He's been um, remade for this movie. The Cenobites look incredible as well. All the Cenobites look good. Flesh, clothes. It's not like they have the leather gear. They don't have that anymore. The latex, the leather, you know what I'm saying? They don't have that kind of thing. Um, which I like. It was, it was a good change. It was a good change. More flesh being wrapped around the body or wrapped around the metal contraptions. You know what I'm saying? To kind of give them that look. Um, but yeah. Um... Riley at one point even stabs the chatterer with the box and the hell priest herself just goes rips them apart. I'm like, oh snap, they've changed. And I was like, oh, I didn't like that. I did not like that. That's one of the, the things I did not like. But this movie that you could just attack a Cenobite with the box and the hell priest has to go by those rules and destroy it. So I'm like, uh, nah, they're not like that. Nope. That's one of the, that's one of the cons of this movie. One of the cons. Um, one, of the, one of the dislikes. So, yeah. That was one of them. Uh, that, was the, the, that was probably one of the main ones in my eyes. That's the main problem in my eyes. Uh, so, yeah, that happened. So then, <laughs> Matt's boyfriend, he... Literally, obviously, his name, yeah. So, yeah, my boyfriend, what's his name? I want to get his name here. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know, I don't know if you know. Nah, it's going to take too long, I'm going to find his name. But, yeah, my boyfriend, he almost died at one point. But, um, Riley 
chose to save him. I said, hey, because she, she gets spiked herself at one point in this movie as well, towards the end. And then she passed the death from him to Trevor. The Trevor Gowish stabs Trevor. They take it, they kill him. Um, <laughs> and then Roland's character. As at this point, as Trevor's dead, it's complete. The series of killings are complete. So then he goes, I don't want this anymore. Take this out of me. You guys lied to me. So then her, <laughs> but we realize this house traps Cenobites in as well because of the device. It reminds of Hellraiser 4, where you could create this massive contraption to contain the Cenobites and destroy it. A little callback to Hellraiser 4, I like that. Clive Barker, much respect. Because Hellraiser 4, was, the bloodline was really good as well. This could have been done better because you, there was all kinds of problems to do with that movie anyways, behind the scenes, what I read about, so yeah. But great concepts in bloodline. Great depth in the plot as well, and the backstory, which I found incredible. Um, which gives you great insight to the, to the box itself as well, and the creator behind it. But, yeah... He summons Leviathan down. He wants the audience with Leviathan. Leviathan comes down. Devil himself, he comes down. <laughs> Massive chain through the chest. The big chain. The big daddy. Was right into Roland's character. Takes him up. He's gone. Riley chooses nothing. She didn't choose anything. Power, sensation, liminal, nothing. She didn't choose anything like that. So she goes, because no, Hell, the Hellraiser said to Roland, you chose for the Biathan configuration. And that's, that's when he got spiked and taken up into the sky. But Hellraiser said to Riley, you have chosen for the Mint configuration. Because Riley didn't choose. And the uh, Pinhead, the Hell Priest, says, you're going to live with this regret. Grief all your life because you never chose one of the gifts. That's what you chose. You chose grief. Didn't choose to resurrect your brother. So that was the whole point of this um, movie of Riley trying to resurrect or trying to find her brother. But she said, No, I know what your gifts can do. Not choosing any. Don't try it. <laughs> so then they, they, they leave and you just go turns the box. So I just I researched the meant as well, just the way it meant in that respect. Of what she chose, so it said. Of lament means to grieve, to re regret something. Basically, all the type of regret, S sorrow, like sadness. You know, so so she chose. So her and um, Matt's boyfriend they leave because they're, they're the two who survived this ordeal. Um, so yes, yeah, so and then they leave, and then we have a scene at the end of this movie. We see Roland Voigt. Go and vision this character that's been stripped and warped and transformed in this ethereal, this kind of spiritual awakening. Even his trans his eyes going black, bodies being deformed, mutilated. Um, and the visual's incredible, so good of this scene as well. His flesh being torn, being stripped and wrapped around his body. Him having a new form. I, th I think he's being turned into a Cenobite because he went, because she goes, you would much more appreciate power. So yeah, so that's pizza. So basically, she gave him power instead of sensation. She changed it now. So that's what he's got. He's experiencing power in the Cenobite world. So yeah, so that was the end of that movie. So, interesting Interesting movie, very interesting, very good, very well shot. Direction is incredible in this movie. Um, much more eerie, eerie feeling of a, of a Hellraiser movie. Hellraiser, the original Hellraiser is like ba ba, gore, flesh being torn, epic one-liners, you know. Much more grunge looking, you know what I'm saying? Goth 
esque. But yeah, great movie. Um, I, I recommend it. I'd recommend it. Hulu on fire. Once again, Hulu with the hits. No misses. These last couple of years, no misses. Hulu on fire. This is the year of Hulu. Um, yeah. So. So good. So good. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, you know what to do. Press that notification bell, set it to all settings. Put your comments in the comment section down below. Twitter and Instagram where you can get at me. If you want to donate to the channel, Legend of All 101. Cash out, baby. Yes. Okay. So yeah, Hellraiser, 2022 in the books. Jamie Clayton, great job. Cloud Barker, executive produced. Great at producing. David Bruckner, directing on point. All cast and crew. Salute to you. So I'm out. Peace.